Greeting everyone. Welcome back to Miss Recaps. Today I will be talking about a Japanese comedy mystery film called Symbol, released in the year 2009. Spoilers ahead. Stay safe and enjoy. A Japanese man wearing very colorful pajamas wakes up in a white empty room with no doors, windows, or ceiling. When he gets close to one of the walls to take a closer look, he sees a strange thing sticking out of it, a male member-shaped bump. After poking it a few times, he presses the tip, which makes hundreds of giggly baby angels come out of the floor and walls. They only stay there for a few seconds before going back the way they came, but now all of their bodies are sticking out of the floor and walls. This part is called learning. As he sniffs the finger, he used to press the strangely shaped button. The man screams in fear, then cries out and begs for help from anyone nearby, but no one helps. He decides to start pressing the different buttons to see what happens. Every time he does this, a different random object, like a small toothbrush or a big vase, falls into the room. When he presses the same button again, he gets the same thing. This is how he gets a big pile of chopsticks when he tests this idea on one button. But when he presses the button next to the chopstick one, a small cart comes out of the wall and hits him in the legs, ending his fun. After he cries out in pain, the next button he presses turns into a but that farts on his face. After hours, the man has a lot of different things in the room, and when he throws the ball at the wall, it hits a button that gives him sushi. This makes him happy because he's been getting hungry, but then he realizes he needs soy sauce. He asks his captors for it, but as usual, they don't give it to him. So, he keeps pressing one of the buttons until he has a bunch of sushi but no sauce. The man finally gives up and eats the sushi, which he thinks is pretty good. When he's done with the last piece, he presses the button for more food and gets angry when a bottle of soy sauce finally arrives. After pushing the bottle out of the way in anger, he presses a different button and gets a pair of old-fashioned 3D glasses. When he puts them on, he sees a baby angel pointing at his member. The man is happy because he thinks he may have found the answer, but when he presses that button, all he gets is a countdown and a big but that comes down from above and farts on him. After a few hours, he has read five volumes of a very entertaining manga, but when he presses a button to get the sixth, he gets the seventh. Frustrated, he tries other buttons, which give him eight and nine, but still no six. But when he presses the last button, he gets a big surprise. It opens a part of the wall that covers a door. The man is happy to have found this, but in his excitement, he can't remember which button opens the door. He picks one at random and is shocked to see an African tribesman run from wall to wall. The next one makes water fall on his head. The third one is the one he needs, so he runs to it as soon as the wall opens, only to have it close in his face. The second time he tries, the same thing happens. That's when he figures out that the door stays open as long as the member tip is down, so he starts trying different things to do that. First, he presses it with his foot to get into a runner position. Next, he hits it with a fly swatter as far away as he can, hoping that the distance will affect how fast he runs. All of these things don't work, and neither does pulling it with a jump rope or hitting it with air from a fan. After pressing the button, his next plan is to get on the cart and push it, but after a few tries, he realizes he just can't control it. He needs to find a way to keep the tip of the button down. He puts the big vase on top of it, but the button keeps sticking back up. The man figures out that he needs to fill the vase with something heavy to make it stay down. First, he presses the water button, but it doesn't work. No matter how hard he tries to make the water go somewhere else, it always falls on him. He tries again by putting sushi in the vase, but it gets so heavy that he can't even pick it up. The neck of the vase is also too small for him to put his hand through, so he has no choice but to use chopsticks to take out the sushi one piece at a time. After a few seconds, when he is far enough away, he can just barely pick up the vase and move it closer to the buttons. When he gets there, he has to put the vase on the floor because he can't remember which button it was. When he tries one, the African tribesman comes out and accidentally bumps into the vase's base, causing it to crack and break in half. This drives the man crazy, and while he is screaming non-stop, 
he finds the right button and starts covering it with sushi. This, too, doesn't work, and the little member keeps showing up in the rice. The man then tries to cover the button with tape, and then with tape and a steel plate, but neither of those work. The door hitting him in the back hurts, so the man takes painkillers and takes a nap. When he wakes up, he wants to brush his teeth, so he presses a button to get water. But it was the wrong button, and this one shows a rope coming down from the ceiling. This makes him feel better right away because it gives him a new idea. He opens the door, then uses the rope to swing himself across the room and get to the other side before the door closes. When he tries to open the door behind the fake wall, however, he finds that it is locked. He gets back to the room just as the door is closing, but it still hits him on the way out. Frustrated, he kicks the wall, which makes one of the buttons work and shows the key floating in the middle of the room. But, just like the door, it goes away when the button is pushed again. So the man needs to find a way to keep both the key and the door open. But first, he needs to find the button again. He lost it when he got sidetracked. By looking at where his foot would have landed when he kicked the wall, he picks a button, only to have a dog bark at him from behind the wall. The same thing happens when he presses the next button, but the third time is a charm. The man walks backwards while keeping his eyes and pointing hand on the button. He picks up a piece of sushi and brings it back to the wall to mark the right button. But when he presses it, the dog comes back out. This time, he finds the button faster and goes with his plan. He makes the rope appear and swings on it to reach the different buttons. But it's still enough. As he falls to the floor, he sees a plunger that he had gotten from one of the many buttons. He realizes that he can use the plunger to touch the wall and push himself farther. After the first try, the plan works perfectly. By swinging on the rope and pushing himself with the plunger, he is able to press the button key, grab the key, press the door button, and reach the door before it closes. He doesn't waste any time and quickly puts the key in the lock and turns it. When he tries to open the door, he finds a nasty surprise. It also has a separate lock on the top that needs three numbers to open. The man rushes out and gets hit by the door as it closes. Frustrated, he throws the plunger at the opposite wall, which pushes the button that lets the African tribesman out. As he watches him walk by, he realizes something, there are three numbers painted on his forehead, which must be the code he needs. Since the man only has a limited amount of time behind the door, he swings on the rope and jumps three times. Once for each number that needs to be put in. The third time, he stays put and opens the door. It's a little hard to open, so he has to push harder. When he finally does it, the piece of wall behind him closes trapping him and making it impossible for him to open the door all the way. The man sits on the floor and starts crying because he is so upset. He thinks about how much fun he had with the things he got from the buttons. He had been locked up there too, but at least he had room to move and things to do. Now he realizes that he didn't appreciate what he had at the time. He feels a breeze on his face from the left wall all of a sudden. As soon as he touches it, he finds a crack that shows it's a fake. He doesn't waste any time and pushes the panel open right away. He runs out of there and soon comes to a strange hallway floating in a completely dark area. He seems to run toward an exit for a very long time, and by the time he gets to a room, his hair is longer and the colors on his pajamas have faded. This room is also empty, and the door he uses closes as soon as he walks through it. Instead of baby angels, there are adult ones here and they too disappear into the wall, leaving only their wings to be used as buttons. This part is called, practice. In the meantime, Antonio's family in a city in Mexico is worried because Antonio's father, a wrestler known as Escargo Man, is acting more quiet than usual. His wife thinks it might be because his next opponent is a lot younger than he is, but the grandfather says that experience, not age, is what matters. Escargo Man's daughter sister Karen picks him up in her truck and drives him to the wrestling ring so he can get ready early. By changing clothes and praying to the Virgin, Antonio's classmates pick on him at school because he bet on Escargo Man. They call him a weak loser. As the time for the match to start gets closer, 
Sister Karen drives her van again to pick up Antonio and their grandfather so she can take them to see Escargo Man in action. Karen doesn't stay, though. Right before the show starts, Antonio and his grandfather find some of the last seats. The Northern Tough Ones, which is made up of Super Demon and Tequila Joe, are the first team to enter the ring. Then Escargo Man and Silver Eagle come in as Kiss Me A Lot, which is their team name. Silver Eagle is the first one to fight for his team. He gets off to a great start, but the Northern Tough Ones quickly beat him when they fight him all at once instead of one by one. They keep pointing at Escargo Man and asking him to join the fight, but he won't until Silver Eagle uses a trick to make Super Demon and Tequila Joe hit each other, which lets Escargo Man get away. Escargo Man is also quickly beaten, but just as his opponent is about to hit him with a chair, the man in the mysterious room presses a member button. This makes Escargo Man's neck magically grow longer, allowing him to hit both of his opponents with a blow to the head and knock them out. The man notices that nothing is happening in the room, so he keeps pressing the same button. This makes Escargo Man hit Silver Eagle, the referee, Antonio, and even the bell. When the man sees that nothing is happening, he starts to try different buttons. During a show in Los Angeles, one person makes the singer of a metal band breathe fire over the crowd. The second one makes a Russian magician fail his trick when he tries to make his assistant disappear. And the third one makes a man in China bark at his own dogs. The man is about to give up when he sees light coming from above. Unlike the last room, this one doesn't have a ceiling, and he can see angels flying around in the distance. He decides to try something completely different this time. Instead of pressing the member buttons, he will use them to climb the walls. It works, and every time he grabs or steps on a button, something amazing happens on Earth, like flowers blooming or an elephant dying. The higher he goes, the more complicated the effects become. It's no longer just nature, but also people and things big and small, like a toaster and going to the moon. By the time he gets to the top, the man's hair and beard are long enough that he no longer needs to hold on to the wall. Now he can float like the angels, and using all the training he got in the other rooms, he accepts his role as God and starts picking humanity's biggest hits on purpose instead of pushing buttons at random. By the time he's done, He's surrounded by feathers instead of walls, and he goes through a glowing portal to get to the last room. This one has pictures of the continents on the walls and a big button that a man is about to push. This is the phase known as future. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.